Now that we have our two main branches that we want to work with, we actually want to retrieve these separately. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce this branch component because I really just want to select this one tree branch. So the way that this works is I plug my data tree into the branch component and then this is orange which means it's missing some data. So I need to specify which parameter this is. So if we hover over our output here we see that there is a branch 0 and a branch 1. So this is asking for the tree branch. There are a couple ways we can do this. One is we can right click on this input and set our path. So the first one we want to do is path is zero. And you select the path by putting it in curly brackets. So now if we highlight this branch, you'll see that it's only selecting the fins in the x direction. Another way to do this is to actually create a panel. And a panel is just kind of like an empty container for strings, which is just another way of saying text. So I'm going to put in text here. I'm going to shrink this down a bit. And then I can actually plug this into my branch component. And for now, we're going to have to do this operation for both branches. But for now, we're just going to work with the one branch to generate the notches. So stepping back, we're actually going to generate the notches one at a time, but we need both branches to do that. So I'm actually just going to copy this with Control C and then paste it. And what I'm going to do here is with the second branch, I want the second branch branch. So I'm going to put in 1 because remember these things start at 0 and 1. Okay. So I need to change this to 1. Click OK. And so now if I hover over my branch output it's going to say 9 locally defined values, closed planar curves, which is great. Now what I need to do is I need to find where these fins intersect each other. So I'm going to go to the intersect tab I'm going to use the curve curve intersection tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this main branch. Actually to help me I'm going to rename these branch X and branch Y. So this will help to remind me of which direction I'm working with. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull in these two outputs into the input of the curve intersection command. But if we look in our preview window, there's something funny going on. Really all it's doing is it's going through each branch and comparing the first values. So really what I want to do is I want all of the X fins to look at all of the intersection points with all of the Y fins independently. So what I can do is I can actually create a new branch for every single fin. So to understand what's going on here, we'll use the parameter viewer again. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it over. So if I plug in my points here, you'll see now I have this nice branching data structure. And this is what I want. I wanted all of my X fins, which is my seven fins, so you can see each of those fins is listed out here, to solve intersection for each of the nine Y fins, which you can see in this branch here. So each X fin is solving intersection points with the Y fins, zero through eight, which is nine fins. So if I didn't graph that, what we'd be working with is we'd just be solving for each of the nine fins, whichever list was bigger. So now I'm gonna go back to graph and we have this nice looking data structure here. And we have all of our points. And this is correctly structured because we want all the intersection points for the first fin, the second fin, the third fin, and so on. But in this case, we actually don't need this first branch. We can eliminate that. So what we're going to do, we're going to shift this path again. So I'm going to plug that in here. And now if we were to look at our parameter viewer again, we'll see that this first branch was eliminated. Now we're working with just seven individual sets, each of those having a bunch of intersection points. And then just to be safe, in this case we're working with some pretty clean geometry, but sometimes you'll get invalid pieces of geometry or null elements in your data structures. So we're going to use the clean component. And I'm going to plug my data tree into the tree input. I'm going to right click on this E input, which is a toggle to remove empty branches. I'm going to right click and I'm going to set the boolean to true. So now if I 
plug this in here, it's actually gonna look the same because we didn't really clean anything up. But sometimes if you're working with crazy or more complex geometry, sometimes you'll get some null or invalid elements and we'll wanna remove those from our final set. And then also, since we're working, each fin you'll notice has a top and a bottom intersection point. And we're really only interested in one of those for this in the x direction. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a component called dispatch. And what dispatch allows us to do is it allows us to take an individual list and split it up based on a pattern. So in this case, it'll split that pattern and we use booleans which are true and false values to create that pattern. And so what it'll do is it'll create an output for true values and false values. So basically in this case, we're going through each of our points and we wanna select every other point. And just to illustrate what this is doing, I'm gonna use the list item component. And I'm gonna plug this tree into the list item and then I'm gonna create a slider object and I'm gonna plug this into the slider. So if I select my list item, you can see that these are alternating top and bottom. So if I go to my zero element, the first thing is it's a set of points on the bottom edge of the fin. The second one are the top, third bottom, fourth top, and so on. So basically by using the dispatch tool, we're sorting these into odd and even numbers of the list, which will translate into the top and bottom elements of our fins.